Welcome fellow fans of Clash of Clans and thank you so much for spending a few minutes of your day with me. I know my voice isn't 100%, but we will get through this together as we talk about the closest war ever that Lost Phoenix has had. Now we've been around the block. We're not the best war clan in the world, but we are level nine. We have nearly 150 wins. And this was the closest war that we have ever seen. It came down to percentage points. And it just goes to prove that it's best to grind out every single building in these style wars when you can. When it's an even match like this and there's that potential that it could come down to just one attack or just one building sometimes, it is crucial to go as far as you can, as long as you can, and that's what happened in this war. Now there were a lot of three star attempts, but not a lot of three star successes. So it really came down to these two star attacks and just how much damage could get done. Foggy moved in with a ton of wizards, very heavy on the wizards, very risky when you're trying to avoid those giant bombs in these anti three star layouts. Now Foggy doing a good job, he has grabbed the second star, but because of the nature of these anti three star bases, the spread out design of the splash damage of the Expos, it does make that third star very difficult, especially for this style attack. So again, it just comes down to how close can you get? How many last buildings can you take out? And Foggy's attack just about to wrap up. The Archer Queen finally goes down. It's up to the Warden and a few last units to grab as many buildings as they can. And we had several attacks that came close. High 70s, low 80s. I think my best attack in this war was 79%, but not quite as good as Foggy's. As he wraps it up, he is going to end up with 84% in this very solid two-star attack. And again, it could have come down to any one of these individual attacks that are so high in percentage, up around 80% that made the difference in this clan war. So well done, Foggy. We move on to the next replay, and we've got Marv dropping the queen walk on this village, and you can see the two external mortars on this side, definitely vulnerable, ideal to get out of the way with the queen walk and then send in your witches. But the queen, it's gonna take a while for her to get to that second mortar. Despite the attempt at the funneling, the high hit points of that gold storage on the right hand side are just too much for the wizard to handle. So the queen comes back and she ends up on the wall, but she will eventually get to that other mortar, which does help out with the early attack and all of those wishes. You can see so many witches and not a lot of golem protection. So it's going to come down to opening up the interior of this village with those earthquake spells, getting the splash damage out of the way, and a well-placed jump spell is going to allow the king, the golem from the clan castle, and the rest of the witches to head right towards the core. And there goes the archer queen, takes out that second mortar. The lava hound has come out and met the witches, and the queen has gone on her walkabout. She finished up and almost as planned, she is going to go off and to the left around the base clockwise as the rest of the units head right to the core and they are going to take that town hall down. And the quad quake definitely opens things up although there are a lot of enclosures at the top of the village and that is where you're counting on the queen walk portion to try to survive but the offset eagle artillery is going to last and as you can see units are heading towards it but not going to get it down and that is pretty much going to seal the deal against any three star on this base. It's not close to the edge and it's also not close to the town hall. So a well designed anti three star base in this case, the Archer Queen out there, she's got lots of health left, but the interior units, not a lot of them left and he's going to come close, but Marv not quite able to pull out the three star. The queen is suffering some serious damage over there. The skeleton traps around that eagle artillery. The eagle almost fell, but it's going to stand and definitely puts an end to this raid. The queen falls, the last of the units about to fall as well. But again, Marv with over 80%, 82% damage right there. And that could be another one of the critical attacks that led to this percentage point victory for Lost Phoenix. So it ends at exactly 83%. Well done, Marv. But we move on to the clutch, the absolutely clutch win from Freak Show. 
going against this anti three star base again with the quad quake this time no queen walk just a straight go wee wee and watch the deployment here i love these jump spells absolutely perfect positioning but check out the golems and all of the wizards and witches so tightly grouped and go down so early all together it's all or nothing right here from freak show he has left nothing behind every single unit is down right now it's just a matter of is there a giant bomb in that gap right there and there's not if there were things certainly would have ended up differently but no giant bomb all of the wizards all of the witches heading to the core they are safe and soon will be under the protection of the eternal tome there it goes five seconds of fun as they get in there and you can tell that this one's going well early despite the maxed out base the core is wide open and you actually have a group of wizards accompanied by a single witch on the lower left of your screen doing the walk around the outside and that is going to be critical in contributing to the success of Freak Show's attack. Yes, Freak Show's got 60% damage, 2 stars, but he is far from done as the units continue to work their way around this base. Most of the units at the top of the screen are gone and right here it doesn't really look like a 3 star is going to be easy, but somehow, someway, even with these level 11 walls, these units will continue their way around here and right now the critical difference in this attack is the fact that the Archer Queen and the Grand Warden are able to work on getting through these walls while there are no defenses firing upon them. That is all of the difference and that is exactly what Freak Show needed. These heroes survive while they sit paused stuck on these walls. Once they get through they can work their way through the rest of the village and wrap up a solid, yes, three star attack. In fact, the only 3-star win that Lost Phoenix had in this war, yes, the Hitmen also had one 3-star attack, and it came down to 101-101, a tie, and Lost Phoenix wins it by percentage points. Less than 1%, less than half a percent, makes the difference in this war, and we just barely edge out the closest war win we have ever had. Now the fact that Hitmen had 13 attacks remaining makes no sense to me. They obviously could have won this war had they gone back in and pushed for higher percentage points. But in any case, we won. We will take it. Another one for Lost Phoenix and another episode in the books. Thank you guys so much for sticking around all the way to the end. Hit that subscribe button. Like if you liked it. See you tomorrow. Full attack. Galidon! Galidon? Not today, Peter. Not today.